And hello, you are so welcome to the Reluctant Speakers Club Expert Series. Coming up today, we're going to talk about why speaking up can really boost and add oomph to your personal brand, both online as well as offline. And we have a terrific guest who's in our chair today, our expert chair all the way over in New Jersey. It's Lynette Young. And Lynette, of course, let me get this right now. You are the Director of Marketing Technologies over at Mingle Marketing. You're a social media specialist, but you're also a ninja in all things Google+. In fact, you have more than 1.5 million people who follow you. But of course, I also know you for your professional speaking. And we met recently in San Diego, and I'm thrilled that you've joined with me here today. I know we kept bumping into each other over and over during the course of that event. So this was meant to be, I suppose. It was, yeah. Now, one of the things actually that we were chatting about both at, uh, at the bar and also that you were talking about in general is something that's happening uh, where the importance of being able to produce live content is having an increased value in terms of online connection and people paying attention to it. Why is that so important? Well, I, I've, I mean, the conversations that we had were so interesting, and, and I know a lot of what we were talking about was the idea of creating live content online, but not just text-based content, not just like necessarily a tweet or something, but being able to do something like this, some, some sort of live content that is either audio or visually based. Um, I think it, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I can kind of make uh, professional hunches for this, but I'm sure there's research somewhere to back it up. But the idea... There is, it's somewhere out there. Um, but the fact is, is that um, you can create so much of a quicker bond with people by seeing them, by hearing their voices, by hearing their funny little Jersey accent when they say water and dog, like I do. You know, yeah. there's there's a lot to be said for also an unedited version of you. I mean, you can script things, you can, you can practice talks, or, or rather you can, you know, have someone else edit text that you're writing. And sometimes you... Um, can either clean yourself up so, too much, but I think that the idea of doing live content or at least recorded content that's visual online is such a fast track to building rapport and trust with people online nowadays. And there's really no reason not to, to be quite honest. Um, video is very easy. It's very expensive. We can do it from our phones. We can do it from our computers. Um, so the tools and the bandwidth are there and the desire for people to connect with you via yeah. these media channels is very much there. I mean, you look at how popular YouTube is, look at how popular Hangouts are, that sort of thing. Um, so that was a lot of the conversations that I remember you and I had, and I'm glad to know that we're kind of on the same. Oh, we are. Uh, listening intently, and I have to say that one of the things that we're talking about, and you use the word actually, is that it really creates a great deal of trust because mm -hmm. if you can see people as well as hear them, as opposed to just reading their words where we have the attention span of a gnat today, it really uh, it, it creates greater connection, I suppose. It does, and it's funny because at um, when we when we had met in San Diego, a friend of mine works for a very large uh, company, online media company that revolves around a lot, a lot about pets, right? So I'm like, your job is so easy, right? Because all you have to do is put pictures of kittens and puppies and everyone will love you online. And yeah. he made a couple suggestions to me of things that they've learned over the course of some time that definitely correlate. And it made me think about people as well, too, that photographs of animals work better when you're actually the animal is looking at the camera because that yeah. eye to eye contact really stirs an emotion with someone to make that connection. And it's the same with people. I'm not saying that, you know, you should be like talking off screen or whatever, but the idea of doing video and being able to see someone and actually look at their eyes as they're speaking to you, I think builds mountains of trust very, very quickly. Oh, it does for sure. And, you know, the interesting thing is, the truth is that there is such a level of noise online. I mean, even while we were in San Diego, you know, the, the, there was conversation just the previous Friday. I thought it was very clever because I knew all about Meerkat. Days later, Periscope is out and it's yesterday's news. So, you know, so much noise out there and it's so difficult for people, if you like, to uh, find really interesting content. So when they hear somebody, I suppose that adds a whole another element to it. 
It does. And I've been podcasting for a very long time. I'm a little bit more behind the scenes now, but breaking back out, I'll get in front of the microphone and camera again. But yeah. even hearing people's voices um, builds an instant connection. And, and the same as you, although you are much uh, uh, a level magnitude larger than I am as far as professional speaking goes, um, you know, even I talked about speakers about having um, speakers reels and video and samples of how they speak and how they talk. Um, when I was in San Diego and, you know, I had written some blog posts and I was doing some promotion to say that I was going to go out there, but it was all text-based. And then I had met a couple people and they're like, wow, Lynette, you're so much funnier in real life than I thought you were online. And I was like, what? I thought I was kind of funny online, but you lose so much of it by text. You just don't get, you know, so I feel that you don't necessarily get someone's true you know, we always talk about these things when it comes to corporate branding about voice and identity and and infliction and stuff like that. And I think the best way to sidetrack all of that is just go direct to talking to someone to doing it on video or audio. So I was, you know, kind of had to eat my own dog food a little bit there and go back to video some more so people can get your personality, can get a really good sense of what you're about, um, what you stand for, and in some instances, what you're selling. Well, absolutely. I like that fact where people saw a whole other side to you. And maybe really that's because they got the story. They got the Lynette story. Here's the real Lynette. Here's what you should know. So, yeah, that's a whole other layer, isn't it? It is, absolutely. And like I said, you know, the Internet is fast and furious right now. We should be doing more of this. It's the thing that people are afraid to do. But it is the thing that sets you apart the most from everyone else, like you, like your field, um, with similar backgrounds and experience. You know, if you have this, you have automatically put yourself at the top of someone's attention. Yeah. Well, now, something that I took from um, watching your session, which I got to watch back recently, uh, when you were talking about ninja tricks for <laughs> Plus. And this is kind of thinking about how speaking can then help you online and then how online can help you. You use a, a phrase that uh, I'm sure lots of uh, tech people use, and I had never heard it before, narrow casting. And I love that. I think that's a great way to describe, mm -hmm. if you like, getting content that's really helpful for, to people. But what is it? Explain, explain what narrow casting is. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I'm sure I'm not the first person to use it, and I know it's a term I've either had in my head or used for a while, but this the idea of broadcasting, right, just like television and radio of, of days gone by and still here, you're really putting it out and you're hoping that a very small segment of your people that are interested in you will happen to tune in on it. The idea for me of narrow casting is making yourself and your content known that you stand for this niche, that these are the things that you're going to talk about, that these are the things that are important to you. And if you are interested in those things, you know, you'll the, people will be drawn towards you. But when I talk to people or I talk and I publish content or I publish a video, I'm not trying to make what I'm speaking about so broad in concept that I hope that some of the people like some of the things that I say, I'd rather have you're either interested or you're not. And I'd rather kind of cut away and call away the people that aren't interested in what it is and to form a deeper relationship with those that are interested. Nowadays, people will consider it more curation, but this idea of, of broadcasting to a narrow scope of people is something that I've been passionate about for a pretty long time. Well, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that word because you are the queen of circles when it comes to Google+. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I suppose in the context of um, something that we, we, sometimes we use these Seth Golden phrases about, you know, creating tribes and communities, but that is, I suppose, a real route to uh, connecting more effectively with people at a level that matters to them. So. If you were giving advice to speakers on how they can get more connected through um, uh, circles or the equivalent elsewhere, what would the most important things be they ought to bear in mind? I would say to think about the three things, the two or three things, <laughs> excuse me, that you want to be known for, that you want to project yourself out as, and then search and find and circle and communicate with those people that are interested in those same type of things. I mean, Google Plus, in the search inside of it's run by Google, right? We all love the Google search engine. Yes. So go out there and find people. And, and I always say, communicate with them first. Share things to them that you know that they'll be interested in. 
um, you know, kind of start that conversation and give to them first before you expect from them to come over to your side. Um, so that's really big. I see a lot of people don't have time. I don't have time for a new social network. I don't have time to talk to people. Well, do you have time to do a business or, or make more speaking engagements or make more money? Because yeah, all of that starts with people. So you have to kind of go in grassroots and um, behave that way. But for my theory and, and tactic that I use for circles is to put no more than say 50 or 75 people in a circle that are interested um, in certain types of content and then share it to them exclusively because there's nothing that people like better than knowing that they got something someone oh, else didn't. That's nice. Yeah, we like that. Right? I yeah. like that a lot. So find interesting content, make things just for those people and share it with them. Don't expect them to reshare it. Don't expect them to sign up for your newsletter. Just do it because you want to grow a relationship with them. Um, yeah. You know, and focus on that one one time, one circle at a time if you want to. Um, I may be connected to a million and a half people or a million and a half people are connected to me, but I can't have meaningful relationships personally or professionally with that number of people. So what I do do is try to concentrate on the, the number, the capacity of people, professionally yeah. and personally, that I can handle and that I feel that I can serve without letting yeah. them down and that's the number so there's no magic number just how many do I how many people do I think that I could actively and productively serve um, in my day and in my business and not disappoint them and if the number gets too big and I start disappointing people then I have to kind of roll it back a little bit no and and, and all of that center though in this this uh, idea of really creating better and stronger relationships so few and well actually beats many and shallow I guess Yes, yes. I mean, of course, when you're talking about big corporations and global strategies and tactics for that are way different. But when we're talking about someone that their business is them and their intellectual property and the things they think and know and their experience is their business, you know, you have to build those relationships. It's just the really to me, it's the only way to do it because anything else is not genuine. And then when they go to see you or hire you or work with you or whatever, what they're buying is or what they thought they were buying is much different than what you're actually delivering so i am i'm really big for really kind of not putting everything out online oh goodness no but be what you do put out be the most honest version of yourself that you can no absolutely and i think that's one of the things that really comes over when um, i watch you um, speak because i know you've been doing a lot more speaking in recent years and actually maybe we'll talk about that for a second how has that kind of helped you in terms of how people relate to you online you know it's funny because last year at new media expo so this was early 2014 i had done a keynote at uh, the conference and when i walked in there the conference is very large so i don't know everyone there even though i've been part of that community for a decade um you know they see you on stage and people always get funny if they see you on stage because if you're standing on a stage you're the perceived expert and some people think that that means you're smarter than them or you're whatever it just means i just happen to be on the stage at that point um but the relationships seem to build very quickly and you know, by meeting people and shaking hands and helping them out and things like that. I think that um, it gives a human voice to all of my actions online and even things as funny as the Jersey accent that kicks in every once in a while. If I speak on stage and I don't even get a chance to meet everyone that's in attendance personally and chat with them, they still have seen my mannerisms, heard my funny stories, um, heard my voice and helpfully had me connect with them from the stage because I do strive to do that even if I can't physically meet everyone. So when then they see me online, they're like, oh yeah, I hear your voice in my head when I read your content. So now my personality and um, the connection is now reaching past that stage into all of the other interactions that they see me have with them online. And it becomes much more personal, much quicker that way. Well, for sure. And instantly, can I tell you, never, ever lose your accent, never trying to alter it. And that's true for all of us, incidentally, because your accent is part of who you are. It's your personality. If you change that, um, the, the, the myth, they miss the real you, and we wouldn't want to do that. It's true. It's funny because sometimes, you know, I always say I'm like the... the I had a position once that they wanted me to do like a lot of copy editing, and I was like, oh, my grammar's horrible. I'm from New Jersey. I can't have that. You know, I can 
be okay, but it's when you get tired, it usually comes out quite a bit. Um, or when I'm on a stage in an area of the country that is not near where I'm at, they can usually pick it up quickly. And it's very endearing, actually, to a lot of people. So I, I'm with you. I have to stick with it. Yeah, you, 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 stay, you, you know what? We have a phrase in Ireland, dance with the girl you brought. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, so I knew this would be a wonderful conversation, but if I can round out on something that, you know, we, you combine the speaking and the online engagement, mm -hmm. and if there's one thing that you've now learned as a consequence of professional speaking that is really helping you, I suppose, to do a better job in the content you share with others, what would that be? Oh, there's so much because it also depends on what I'm speaking about. I, I was having a conversation the other day with some online friends that are all professional speakers and some have one talk or topic that they, it's their signature, what I call their keystone talk that they do all the time. And, and then there are other speakers like me that constantly cater for the audience either you know when we're there or that particular client or what happens i don't want to say in vogue but whatever like the trending thing types sure. tends to be but i as a speaker have found the earlier i can connect with the people that i'm going to serve and speak to the better it can be and i found that i try to connect to their communities before i speak if there's yeah. a LinkedIn group or a hashtag or whatever, I want to communicate with those people and find out what they need before I show up. Then I can cater what I'm talking about on the stage to them and it, it means much more. And obviously it shows that I care because I do, rather than just showing up blind, going on stage, talking about whatever I feel like talking about and then kind of leaving. Um, it develops that relationship earlier. So I use the social net specifically to connect to the people that I'm going to be participating with. And that's probably the biggest thing that I see speakers don't doing today. They fly from city to city to city and they kind of forget that there's actual people sitting in front of them that whatever you say could actually impact their their businesses, their lives, or their professions. So I want to help them as much as possible. And sometimes that means I have to help them before I actually speak to them. Well, that, that's good for two reasons. One, because, of course, it means that they get to know a little bit more about you beforehand. But secondly, because you get to do call-outs, and people love to know that you found out a little bit about them before. And the other thing is, guess who will be the first people who will smile back at you in the audience when you look out at them? Yeah, that's actually one of my little secrets that I use is I try to connect to a couple people and from the stage I'll say, well, before I came to your event, I was talking to Janice and she and I said, blah, blah, blah. And, and I could always, see, even if I hadn't seen her before, I could always see because her head pops up and they get all excited. Like she called me out from the stage. It's awesome. But, you know, I would always do that in a positive way. But um, yeah, I absolutely like to try to build some sort of rapport with at least one person, know someone's name besides the organizers before I get there so I can, you know, be part of their community because that's really what they're in doing is they're inviting you in even if it's just for an hour or so, but you're, they're inviting you into their tribe. So why not participate? And that's a great note on which to finish because that's exactly right. All the time as a speaker and indeed online, we want to invite people inside, but you need to have a reason to be there. Mm -hmm. Agreed. You have to earn your keep even though you're on that stage. Exactly that. Well, listen, Lynette, thank you so much for joining with me today. I really enjoyed chatting with you. I knew that I would. Agreed. I love chatting with you. We need to do this more often. Yes, I'll have my people speak with your people. <laughs> okay, I'll have to get some people first. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much. And thank you for uh, watching today. You've been listening to the Reluctant Speakers Club expert series. And until the next time we speak, happy speaking. <laughs>